Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I hope you're having a, a wonderful day. I pray that the blessings and the favor of God is upon your life, and I pray, here, hey, check this out, I pray that you recognize the blessings and the favor of God, because the Lord is good and worthy to be praised. And my friends, his favor is with you. You may not be able to see it. You may be going through some tough things right now and some difficult challenges. We're living in a very difficult time with even locally as well as nationally and uh Globally, we see things happening today that are calls for alarm and concern. We're concerned for our banking system. We're concerned uh, for our safety. We're concerned about uh, our satellites. We're concerned about the, the seeming union that's being formed by China and Russia. We're concerned about the a multitude of things that's going on. Crime is taking place in our country and just about every other day day or actually every two months or so, there is a shooting that have taken place either in high school or, or at the mall or whatever. You see these things going on. And yet, my friends, the Bible tells us to look up. The Bible tells us to be encouraged. The Bible tells us that the end is not yet. In fact, we've got to be busy taking care of our heavenly father's business. Now, I speak to you often about the, the, the lunacy of those who just choose to not believe God. And I've, I've said this for years, that when people fail to believe God's truth, the most amazing thing to me is what they're willing to believe. That, that you choose not to believe the Bible, that's your choice. But oh, what you fall for is amazing. And uh, I'm, I'm just blown away at... Uh, at the people who have fallen for this wicked notion that a man can turn himself into a woman or a woman can turn himself into a man. There's a cartoon out there that illustrates the idiocy of their argument. And uh, we're, we're showing the little cartoon on the, on the screen. Now, the cartoon as it is presented uh, shows a whole lot more, but we're sanctified. And I, I wanted to find a way, thank God, working with Brother Gary and his leadership and genius. We come up with a way to show you, you see there, two women in a shower. You see that they are startled as they look back and see a bearded man standing there. The ladies are naked. They're, they're showering. There's nothing unusual about two women in a shower. Maybe they're at a sports complex. Maybe they're at a high school, but they're in the ladies room, which is clear. They look back and there stands a man with a beard. And he says to them, don't be startled, don't be afraid, don't be troubled, I'm a woman. And you see how the lunacy of man without God is being illustrated even by people who may not even know the Lord themselves. Uh, I had a story here of uh, how some um, uh, our soccer team, the U.S. Uh, uh, women's national team, played uh, the FC Dallas U 15 Boys Academy um, and uh, how the, the best team in the world, U.S. women's team, the team that took it all the way, lost to some high school boys because women are not supposed to compete in sporting events with men. And now we got men who are canceling literally the hopes and dreams of many young ladies who have inspired uh, since uh, middle school, some since elementary. They, they're they running and they're working so that they can win a scholarship. They want to, they want to, 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 to do well and they're competing against themselves. What they couldn't foresee was that the time would come when a guy would be able to uh, uh, enter in and compete with them. 
enter into their contest and compete with girls, and many times the girls fail to get their scholarships, fail to get their victories, fail to get their trophies, things that they've worked for all their lives, because society has lost its mind, and man has decided that he's smarter than God. I'm concerned, and uh, I'm really concerned about uh, uh, what's going on with TikTok. I pray that the our elected officials have the courage, the wherewithal to ban it, to get rid of it in America. The TikTok that is shown in America is not the TikTok that China shows to uh, her own people. Uh, as a result of TikTok, when you interview the average Chinese, Chinese teenager and they ask them, what is your uh, aspirations in life? The average Chinese teenager says, I want to be an astronaut. American TikTok, you interview the average American teenager who watches, who follows TikTok and, and takes this garbage in all day long, and their goal is to be a TikTok influencer. Now, if these trends continue and other nations' children strive to be astronauts, physicists, and smart people, and I'll strive to be jokers and clowns and uh, entertainers, let me tell you, our nation will implode under its own, under the weight of its own ignorance. As never before, I want to say to the preachers who are out there, preach the gospel, declare God's truth, and, and people need to hear you, man of God, woman of God, you are needed, but you're not needed to promote foolishness. Brother Gary, I'm disturbed by the sheer number of preachers now that you can look up online and these people are cussing and swearing and, and they and and this this new movement where the preacher all of a sudden wants to be gangster a gangster preacher if that ain't the dumbest thing I've ever heard tell of uh uh that's that's about as dumb that's a uh, gangster preacher is as big a, a oxymoronic uh, an oxymoronic statement that's as big as much of an oxymoronic statement as same-sex marriage when you're putting things together that don't go together it's a mess and that that preachers now and believers are trying to act gangster come on here god saved us from being gangsters we're something greater than a gangster we're a saint of god we're a born again believer we're the light of the world we're the salt of the earth we are god's influencers we're placed here to show the world the right way to go how to live how to get through this maze in life without blowing your own brains out of someone else's why are we trying so hard to be like the world. The devil is a liar. It's time for the believers out there to step up. And I'm challenging you every day. Let's rise to this occasion. Christ in you, the hope of glory, is able to do whatever God wants done in your life. I'm about to bring this to a conclusion. I'm here to invite you to join me tonight, but I want to read just a little bit of a letter that was written to me from a law firm. I won't give their names. Uh, I, uh, I would rather talk to them first. Before I do that, my assumption is every letter that's written to me is not for me to read publicly and give all the information. But this was from a, a law ter a firm. This man uh, uh, has served as a DA. Uh, he's a lawyer. And his sister, uh, who uh, passed away, uh, from cancer. It was discovered uh, bone cancer in the fourth stages. And he wrote this letter to me. And, uh, and, uh, and she said, uh, th th this is part of the letter that he wrote concerning his sister. She watches your Thursday and Sunday services on Facebook. We discuss your sermons and teachings over the, over the phone and in person. They were a true blessing to both of us. We told everyone about this bishop in Raleigh who was a true man of God who often said, God is a healer and the devil is a liar. This bishop, uh, this bishop worships the God of the Bible. I'm reading his words directly. I would be remiss if I, if I did not tell you something about, and he names his sister. Upon meeting one of 
her friends. This person said, I am a Christian, but I'm not over the top like, and he calls her name. That caused me to ponder this statement. If Jesus is who he said he is, then how, how can we be anything but over the top? He's so right. My sister was definitely over the top for Jesus. Bishop Wooden, you taught us so much. We were Christians who had been raised in church. He mentions her name, had a degree from Liberty University, but we felt like you showed us so much that we had missed. As a matter of fact, you preached her home. You preached her home on the Thursday night before she passed. What a blessing, he says with an exclamation point. The hours before she died, she was praising the Lord and saying, thank you, Jesus. I know I have been long going on and on. He speaks of this letter. It's an encouraging letter. I, I could continue, but the purpose of my letter is to encourage you to continue to fight for the Lord. I am a criminal defense lawyer former elected district attorney. I have shared your words with my clients, telling them that God is the only way. I will continue to do so. People are so happy to discover a man of God who unapologetically speaks the truth despite all the attacks on Christians. I was so touched by this, telling the world that the only thing that matters is that which matters forever, Jesus. And he signs his name. I am so encouraged and inspired by this letter. We get letters uh, quite often, and from time to time, we will read some of them to you. Not to glorify ourselves, because I'm nothing, I'm nothing, we're nothing. What matters is Jesus Christ. If you meet me and forget my name, you have lost nothing. But if you meet Jesus and forget his name, you've lost everything. I heard a story of a lady as I bring this to a conclusion. She was in a foreign country and there was a beggar on the street and uh, the Holy Spirit of God moved upon the missionary and said witness to this uh, beggar. She did not that morning, but when she uh, on her way back to her, uh, her abode, she saw that same beggar. Let me tell you about the love of God. She saw that same beggar in the street. The Holy Spirit said uh, witness to the beggar. She went over and told the beggar about Jesus Christ. And that old man looked at her and said this, I have been talking to him every day, all of my life, but I didn't know his name. And you just told me who he is. My friends, what a mighty God we serve. He has a way of getting through to people and he has a way of using us to get through to people, to reach people. None of us would be saved today had God the Holy Spirit not first tugged at our heart. And when I met Jesus, somebody gave me the name of that tugging. Who has this been? Who is this that makes me think about God, uh, that made me think about God even when I was in the club? That would make me think about doing right, even in the midst of doing wrong. That would make me consider things that I wouldn't normally consider. I didn't know his name. God bless Superintendent James Henry Turner. God bless my mother, Mother Gwendolyn Ellison, my first evangelist who told me his name. His name is Jesus, and there's nobody like him. Now, I want to invite you to join me tonight. Here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, all this week, the uh, New Horizon District District meeting has been taking place under the leadership of my superintendent, William, uh, Superintendent William H. Cooper II, and he's doing a tremendous job. Tonight, the service will be held here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, and yours truly will be preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our theme is strength to do all things. God has given me a word, my friends, tonight that I'm going to preach that you cannot afford to miss. I believe this. 
as a result of hearing the word of the Lord tonight, you're going to be strengthened as never before to continue to fight the good fight of faith, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, to stand in times like these, and to remain sane and calm and confident, knowing that despite the headlines, despite what's going on, amen, your anchor is holding. Amen. My anchor is Jesus Christ. Your anchor is Jesus Christ and he loves us so. So my friends, I want you to meet me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study and preaching. Now I'm going to teach the scriptures, but I feel a preaching fit coming over me tonight. I feel it right now. My God, I'm thinking you can hear it a little bit. I'm fired up and I'm excited because Jesus is alive and well. Jesus is concerned. Jesus is in, in control and Jesus is where you are right now. And he's touching you. He's blessing you. Hallelujah. Make it a great day. Meet me tonight. If you can't be here, tune in. You're going to be blessed. And one day, uh, when I get to heaven, I'm going to meet this lady. <laughs> Man. Gary, I think the thing I love so much about being a Christian is that uh, you can't be a true Christian. <laughs> I got to end this. And, and be hopeless. The, the Christian is not hopeless. Because what we don't get on this side, oh my, ha, ah, we'll get it on the other. And the saints and the people that we will meet and see, you're talking about a time. You're talking about a time. I'll see you tonight. God bless.